Shalom, dear friends. Havarim, we say in Hebrew. My name is Devorah Kalik, and I'm with Bless Israel Network. And I want to welcome you today to Taste of Torah. We're in uh, Parsha Balak, um, which, uh, or Balak, is it, it's said usually in English. And this Torah portion is focused, though it's titled Balak, it's about Bilam or Balaam, the sorcerer who uh, tried to curse Israel. And we're just going to look at one particular verse today, but I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about what his name means, what the sages say his name means. They divide his name, it's actually pronounced in Hebrew, Bilam, and Bil means no or not, and Am means people. So his name means not people, not my people, not the people of God. So, so this is referring to people who are not part of Israel. And I'm not just speaking literally of being descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm, I'm also including those of us who maybe were not born Jewish, but have been grafted into the Jewish people, into the nation of Israel through the Jewish Messiah. So he's the sorcerer of those people who are not Hashem's people. Now, it's interesting because in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, and in Jude, uh, verse 11, and Revelation 2, 14, we are warned about Bilam. In 2 Peter 2, 15, we're warned about the way of Bilam. In Jude, verse 11, we're warned about the error of Bilam. And in Revelation 2, 14, we're warned about the teaching of Bilam. So I think it's very important for us to understand what that is. And again, this is just going to be a taste. I encourage you to do more of your own study or listen to our uh, commentary, which will be more in depth. Um, uh, which, which is called Heartbeat of the Torah. So, I want to look at Numbers 22, chapter 22, verse 28. And I'll just tell you what's going on first. And that is that, you know, Bilam is on his way to meet with Balak, the king, and to, because his intent is to curse the Jewish people because Balak is afraid and his people are afraid of them. And so um, it's a situation where Bilam is on his donkey. He's on his way to meet Balak and with the intent of cursing the Jewish people. And the angel of the Lord comes and the, and the, the donkey, the she donkey, can see the angel of the Lord, but Bilam cannot. And he's trying to stop her from moving and he basically boxes her in everywhere she tries to go because she knows that the angel of the Lord, she doesn't want to mess with the angel of the Lord. Now, mind you, I'm talking about a donkey. So, you know, this is, this is a, you know, a miracle in and of itself. But then she says in verse 28, he, uh, Bilam hits her three times. And so the Hashem opened the mouth of the she donkey and it said to Bilam, what have I done to you that you struck me? these three times. Well, it's interesting because in the Hebrew, the word for these three times is ze shalosh regalim. Ze is these or this. Shalosh is the number three. And regalim means time, but times. But it can also mean something else. The Jewish sages have said that this represents the three times each year when the Jewish people were required to go up to Jerusalem and to appear before Hashem in the temple. It says here, this was an allusion to the future merit of Israel, which would protect it from the Balaams who wished it harm. Three times a year for the three pilgrimage festivals of Passover, um, Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks and Sukkot or Tabernacles. Jews would leave their fields and homes without protection and go to the temple in Jerusalem. 
Did Bilam think that he could harm a people that had such faith in God? So Rashi says, you seek to uproot a nation which celebrates the three appointed times each year. And Rashi is basically saying that you are trying to rob the Jewish people of their inheritance. The festivals, the Torah, the, um, all the covenants are part of the inheritance of the Jewish people, of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Bilam, in a nutshell, was trying to prevent Israel from her destiny by cursing her. Last week, we have Israel in, in Parashah Hukat, we have Israel trying to pass through Edom on her journey to the land of Israel. And if we keep in mind that Israel, the land of Israel, actually represents the Messianic age, when Israel will be fully um, completing her destiny as a light to the nations, bringing the nations to Israel and to the worship of the, the God of Israel. And so the king of Edom would not allow them to pass. This is a prophetic picture of the nations who will not allow Israel to walk and fulfill her destiny. They are robbing her of her inheritance and her purpose. And um, it's, it's actually through Israel that the nations come to Hashem through the Messiah. And of course, the evil one, the Hasatan, the adver adversary, knows this. So, of course, he wants to deceive the nations so that they will pr try to prevent Israel from achieving her destiny. If, may I suggest to you, that if any one of us gets in the way, physically or spiritually, of the Jewish people from fulfilling her role, her prophetic destiny, if we rob her of her inheritance, and say, well, the covenants and the Torah doesn't belong to the Jewish people anymore, it belongs to all of us. If we try to say that there's no distinction between the Jewish people and the Gentiles, that now as followers of Messiah, we're all one, that's also a problem. Because though we, we non-Jews can share in the inheritance of Israel and get everything in terms of inheritance that the Jewish people get that have been given and granted through the Jewish Messiah, though we can have that, it is not for the purpose of replacing them or saying there's no need for them anymore. The Gentiles and the Jewish people have a different role, and I don't have time to get into all of that today, but I want to say, if you participate in this way of thinking, you are following in the error and the way and the teachings of Bilam. You're cursing Israel and you will be judged. Do you know who it is that the Messiah will finally judge at the end when he comes? Have you read Isaiah 63 verses 1 through 6 lately? I'm not going to read all of it, but I encourage you to go there. And you need to understand, we all need to understand, that Edom, the rabbis say, was a code word for Rome, meaning Christianity, what Christianity became. Who is this coming from Edom with sullied garments from Bozrah, this one who is majestic in his raiment, girded with his abundant strength? It is I who speaks with righteousness, abundantly able to save. And then they ask, why are your garments red? And he says, because I have trodden a wine press and not a man from the nations was with me. I trod on them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. My friends, this is a picture. It says, not one of the nations was with me, meaning, not meaning the Gentiles who are grafted into Israel and who are considering themselves as part of Israel through the Jewish Messiah. 
This is speaking of those nations like Bilam, who was, he was the sorcerer of those nations who would not align themselves with Israel, who were trying to prevent her from her destiny. That is who Edom, Edom is. And sadly, it represents Christianity and I believe also Islam today. So we don't want to be part of those people who are cursing the Jewish people or saying there's no need for them anymore because we're all the same. And you know, mis that's a misrepresentation of what Shaul said when he wrote that we are one new man. That's a complete misrepresentation of what it means. And so, you know, this is why in Revelation 18 verse four, it tells us come out of her, her being Babylon, come out of her, my people, be, or else you will suffer the same plagues that she suffers. This is because we are talking of the people of Balaam, who are no people, meaning they're not the people of Hashem, meaning they are not part of Israel. They are either not born Jewish and are, are worshiping the God of Israel and upholding the covenants, or they're not grafted in through the Messiah. It's those people. And so I want to say to you, there's a danger today. The whole BDS movement, this, um, the Christians who are siding with the Palestinians for a Palestinian state, again, robbing Israel of her right to be in this land, the land of her ancient heritage, the land of her heritage. The, and this is, the land of Israel is a permanent heritage. It's forever <laughs> in this age and in the age to come. So let's not fall into this error and set ourselves against Israel. Let's do as Shaul, Rabbi Shaul or Paul said, let's be grafted in to Israel, into the root Avraham and who, through whom came the Messiah and become a part of this wonderful people that is destined to represent God, represent the God of Israel to all the world. And in order to do that, we must learn how to be part of that people. We have a role to play. We are to keep and uphold the ways of that Yeshua taught us and uh, learn the Torah and learn, partake in the covenants in such a way not to replace the Jewish people, but to provoke them to zealousness. The fullness of the nations is having the proper understanding of the Besorah, of the gospel, and participating in it in such a way that we look like Israel, but are not arrogant not trying to replace them, not trying to say they no longer have a purpose and a unique calling apart from us. We are, to, we are to represent the Messiah in such a way to his people that they want their Messiah. That's our role as non-Jews. And we are to never feel that there are no longer there is no longer any need for the Jewish people. They have an eternal destiny, an eternal calling, and an eternal inheritance. And if we want to partake in that, we need to come out of Babylon. We need to come out of Edom. We need to come out of Christianity. Well, my friends, if this message is blessing you, we invite you to uh, become a partner with Bless Israel Network. You can go to our website, www.blessisraelnetwork.com and click on the donate tab and you will be able to give a tax deductible donation that will help us to produce our program, Revelation to the Nations, where we are raising up Zion before the nations and supporting the Messianic believers in Israel and also do more of these kinds of programs so that we can um, share what we're learning and help you to walk in your destiny. So Litraot, Shabbat Shalom from Israel, and may the God of Israel bless you in your rest on Shabbat. Litraot from Israel.